Hey guys, I know I haven't made a video in a while. In fact, I think it's been like three years. I also rebranded my channel, if you might have noticed, mainly because YouTube's search engine kept auto-changing my name to something else so it wouldn't even show up in the search results. So my new brand is called Volkart. To give you a quick little backstory and context, wolves have always been my favorite animal, and I've always loved how the word wolf was spelled in Russian, Volk. And so I played it off the term Volkart, and here we are. Plus, I'm a child of the 80s and 90s, and this synthwave style just has this amazing nostalgic feel to me of a time when I used to fill up sketchpad after sketchpad with characters and drawings. And I thought this was an awesome way to represent the brand of the channel. Simply art for the pure love and fun of it. But enough of that, let's get down to the nitty gritty. Okay, let's start with raster. Uh, raster simply means pixel based. A raster image is made up of tiny little squares called pixels, kind of like a mosaic. And in Photoshop, if you zoom in close enough, you can easily see how a raster image is made up of these tiny little blocks. A perfect example of a raster image is simply any photo. Uh, Adobe actually built an entire program for editing these types of raster images, and you guessed it, it's Photoshop. The most popular types of raster images are, for example, JPEG, PSD, PNG, TIFF, uh, BMP, and my favorite, GIF. One thing to remember, a very important aspect of raster images is resolution. Resolution is a big factor in the quality of an image. Uh, you can measure resolution by how many pixels you can fit into a one inch by one inch square of an image. Or in other words, DPI, which means dots per inch. The more pixels you have in that square, the more building blocks there are to create highly detailed images. So just to clarify, the size of an image is completely different from the resolution. You can actually have two photos that are, are exactly the same size, but different resolutions. The size of an image refers to its dimensions. For example, here we have two photos. Their size or, dim or dimensions are 2.5 inches wide by 3 inches tall. However, the photo on the left is 300 dpi. I took that same photo and kept the size the same, but lowered the resolution to 72 dpi. The 300 dpi image has much more pixels or information per square inch than the 72 dpi image. Like I said before, with more pixels, you can get a higher level of detail. Now, resolution is important to keep in mind because displaying your image on different mediums requires different resolutions. If you want to display your image on a digital screen, 72 dpi is the standard for a quality clear image. If you want to print a raster image, you need much more. You need at least 300 dpi to print a quality raster image. Once you reach the 300 dpi range of resolution, that is considered high res or high resolution images. Uh, remember, it's possible to have a small sized photo with a high resolution, or even a large sized photo with a small resolution. So here are some pros and cons to raster images that should help you figure out when it's appropriate to use raster images and when not to. So pro number one is rich detail. There are thousands and, and even millions of pixels to any one image and you can essentially edit each individual pixel if you wanted to. And so that level of detail can create highly realistic and complex images. Uh, the second pro is editing capabilities. Like I said before, you can edit each individual pixel if you wanted to, and programs like Photoshop make the editing capabilities of raster images almost endless. Uh, let's go through the cons. Uh, one con of raster images is large file size. So even though raster images have a high level of detail, there is a drawback. With more detail comes larger file sizes. Uh, let me explain. The more pixels there are in an image, the more information there is to store. For example, if you want to print uh, a photo the size of a poster at 24 inches by 36 inches at 300 dpi, that's 77,760,000 pixels or pieces of information that the computer has to process. And so needless to say, if you have a smaller resolution, the file size will be smaller. This is why 72 dpi is pretty much the standard for digital media. It provides that quality image while keeping the file size pretty small. Uh, a con number two is they can become blurry when you enlarge uh, raster images. If you've ever tried this before, you'll notice uh, that the photo will become pixelated or blurry. 
This makes sense because a photo only has so many pixels and when you try and make a photo bigger, the computer has to guess and fill in those gaps. Uh, and since there's no way exactly to uh, know how to fill those gaps, the image will appear blurry. So that finishes our uh, a section on raster images. Let's move on to vector. Uh, instead of using pixels to form an image, vector graphics use math. Uh, pretty cool, right? <laughs> uh, inside a vector file is simply an algorithm that tells the computer how to form an image. Adobe also made an entire program designed for working with vector graphics, and you guessed it again, it's Illustrator. Some common vector file formats are EPS, AI, and PDF. Uh, let's go through some pros and cons for vector graphics that will help you know when to use them and when not to. So pro number one, uh, vectors are infinitely scalable because we don't have to worry about pixel in it, pixels anymore with vector. We can scale these images to any size we want to instead of moving pixels around, the math equation just changes. Uh, pro number two, uh, smaller file size. Again, instead of storing pixel information, all the computer has to do is store a math equation. This makes a drastic size, uh, this makes a drastic size decrease in vector uh, image file sizes. This makes them ideal for simple shapes like fonts and logos, which usually require small file size and fast processing speed. Uh, pro number three is editability. With some popular raster image formats, all the information is merged all together, making it difficult sometimes to reopen and make edits. With Vector, you can take any vector format and open it up in Illustrator and edit individual components without affecting other objects in the image. All right, let's uh, go on to cons. Uh, vector image con number one, you get limited details. Because of how Vector uses math to create images, it's just not practical for highly detailed, complex images like photos. Uh, con number two are special effects. And by special effects, I mean uh, a lot of the raster special effects like blurring and drop shadows are just not available in Vector. Uh, Vector was designed for simplicity. I hope that helps. If you want to see more content like this, make sure to like and subscribe. It really helps in making these. Thanks again for watching the video, guys, and take care.